Welcome to another episode of the Paradigm 132 Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Rashad Horn. And on today's episode, I want to talk about something that's probably been spoken about at nauseum. The potential coup to, I guess, overthrow the government. Uh, the protest at the Capitol building. But... I want to talk about this in two different parts. I want to talk about it based on two two thought points that I felt that I wanted to further elaborate on. So this is going to be a two-part series. Now, the first point that I want to speak about it from is I've seen it on multiple publications. I've seen it from multiple individuals. And the statement said, well, had that been... African Americans storming the Capitol building, they would have been shot down. They just that's just what it would have been. They would have been shot down. Now when I hear that, I think about it from the standpoint of the way that we as African Americans have been conditioned to go about doing things in this particular country. We've seen um, and learned about the Boston Tea Party, we've learned about the American Revolution, we've learned about the Civil War, we've learned about just the different type of things. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's one thing I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth on the second broadcast about just the, the division when we talk about, you know, the two Americas. But just staying on this particular point right here. You have to really stop and really grasp that. When someone says, hey, if that had been African Americans, they would have been gunned down. They wouldn't have made it past the barricade. The barricades wouldn't have been wouldn't have wouldn't have even been open. We looked at the response that they had for the protest for the George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. Uh, Ahmaud Arbery, just the culmination of all of these working things together, that there is no way in the world that African Americans have been able to access the Capitol building, right? So, I don't like to, me personally, I don't like to, um, I don't really like to use hypotheticals a lot. I use hypotheticals, but I don't like using hypotheticals in certain situations. So I don't want to use a hypothetical in this particular situation stating what would have happened to African Americans had they stormed the Capitol building. The reason I don't want to use a hypothetical when we're talking about that is because, again, we as African Americans, for the most part, have been conditioned to be nonviolent, to not be aggressive in nature, to kind of utilize the the path of least resistance to try to get things done and that path is voting that path is i'm not here to poke fun at anyone's um religion or denomination but to kind of go and just to pray about it right so when we look at those two main things I don't want to use the hypothetical about what would have happened had there been African American storm in the Capitol building because ultimately I look at it from a standpoint that if that had been the case and let's and, and if if we want to go hypothetical African Americans have a bevy of things to be upset about, right? A bevy of things to be upset about. And at no point in recent history have African Americans displayed a, a vengeful, vengeful mindset, right? It's, it's almost been predictable from the stance of something happens, okay, let's ride. Okay, let's, let's ride. Let's, let's do that. Um, you know, 
even in certain instances where they were talking about, hey, you know, they, they burned down a police station, things of that particular nature. But to actually just go to the particular source, nah. The closest thing we had to that uh, was the March on Washington, as well as the Million Man March by organized by the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And these two initiatives were going to be nonviolent, right? Obviously, we know Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech in D.C. Again, these were nonviolent type of things. And it's easy to say what would have happened, right? Because you kind of know a person. One of the, it's, it's an interesting statistic that I want to, to point out, right? And I'm going to go into two particular things where I feel like that we can't look at of African Americans going to the Capitol building the same way as we look at white people going to the Capitol building, right? So these are the two, this is the statistic that I want to read out and then I want to read out two uh, provisions that were set into place, right? So I got this stat from the National Review and it said that 41% of white households say they own a gun while only 19% of African American households say they own a gun, right? So that's a huge disparity in what we deem to be gun ownership. But again, that goes along the same lines of how it is that we have been brought up. The sense that we don't need, we're, we, we should be nonviolent. Um, the images that we see on television about um, when we use, when they use such buzzwords as Chicago and things of that particular nature, when they talk about how guns um aren't you know aren't good but this is not a gun uh topic right so research so i found an example it wasn't the nation's capital but it was a federal building right so in 1967 the black panther party they did go to the cap they did go to a california capital building armed with guns loaded and nothing happened right but what did happen they didn't get shot down what did happen is the Mulford Act of 1967 which was introduced by Don Mulford and this is what it stated it says prohibited the open carry of loaded firearms with an adium prohibiting loaded firearms in the state capital, right? So, a law was seemingly created. And the following year, we got the Gun Control Act of 1968. Restrictions on who could have a gun, including age. Now, the reason I highlighted including age is due to the fact that there were members of the Black Panther as young as 14, 15 years, you know, 14, 15 years old carrying loaded guns. Black Panthers taught their members how to clean guns, how to wield them, how to just utilize guns, right? So, and there's still, um, you know, groups and, and sects that, that they still do that. I follow um, a few pages in which they, they display African Americans uh, training with weapons but that isn't something that is just widespread amongst our community because again it goes back to the psychology of it in which we're supposed to be nonviolent individuals so when we talk about the aspect of going to the capitol building and African Americans would have been shot down um, beaten across the head they would have this you know they would have dispersed the you know the National Guard and things of this particular nature when you put it into the perspective of the psychology in which African Americans have been subjected to exhibit, then hypothetically, probably yeah. But if we are really looking at this in the sense of the way that those 
white men and women went into the Capitol building and we put that same energy into African Americans, the energy of, you know what, I'm sick of this, I'm tired of this. They're going to go armed. Now, that is the interesting caveat that we have to take into consideration. Would armed African Americans go into the Capitol building, would they be shot down? Now we have to now we have to look at like the aspect of the Black Panthers. We have to look at the history of how guns have played such a major factor amongst the race of people. When we go back to um, the Watts riots, one of the things that was mentioned was that there were soldiers from I believe it may have been Vietnam that had come back home that had been trained, that were proficient with weapons. And when police officers and things of that nature came to that community to try to um, what's the word I want to look for? Try to calm emotions. They knocked out lights and they had individuals that were snipers on the roof. These were, these were black men. Snipers. Those are two statements that you don't necessarily see going together. Black in the black males that are snipers, sharpshooters. We don't necessarily look at ourselves in that particular light. Right? So when we take that and we look at it for, for what it is and we look at the multitude of different ways that uh, gun ownership and again this is one of those particular things this is why I always say that it's so much more you can do covertly than you can do overtly right you can covertly disarm a people you can covertly make a person think that something is not for them based on what they want to give you as societal norms right they can covertly do that and you won't necessarily question it because you would just say, well, you know, that's how it is. And when we look at numbers of it's only 19 percent of black households that have guns, that is a social thing. That's a, a, a psychological thing that has been given. Right. So one of the things that I've always heard people say why we won't want to give up our guns is because they think that hey if you if I give up my guns then martial law can be enacted the next day because I as a citizen do not have the um, weaponry or the defenses to defend myself in the event that I feel like that it's going to be a life or death situation African Americans we don't look at it from that particular standpoint right they go out and they do gun drives in predominantly black areas. Bring your gun in in exchange for money or whatever the situation is. And more than likely, you know, they'll do it. Because we don't necessarily think about it um, from that same standpoint. Because we don't, again, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it is what it is, right? So, getting back to that. Um... If you had, again, African Americans that they were, that were that angry going to a Capitol building, they wouldn't be unarmed. And they wouldn't be untrained. So it's, it's easy to, 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 to shoot down an individual that isn't going there for that type of conflict. When we took to the streets um, for the protest of George Floyd, uh, Maud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, we didn't go there looking for violence, right? So all of the images in which they show of the SWAT team coming down the street with tanks and all those particular different things like that, people with bricks and things of that nature breaking out um, things, you know, setting things on fire, those are violent acts, but they aren't gun violence. They aren't 
hey, I'm going, I'm looking to take your life away. You might get trampled up in something like that because the 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 cry what the cry is we're trying to be nonviolent. We're not trying to incite any particular different thing, right? So it's easy to say that if African Americans would have gone to the Capitol building, they would have been laid down, right? So when I think about that, I want to I want to talk about you know three instances in which African Americans were you know seemingly laid down trying to stand up for something that they felt was right. Uh, obviously, we know about um, Tulsa. We know about the Wilmington riots. We know about other things, but I want to talk about you know three, but two in particular that. I feel haven't gotten the same type of uh, attention that they need. But when we look at it, we have to really stop and we have to think that a lot of things have, you know, have been let slide. Right. So uh, Rosewood, um, we've heard about Rosewood, but just to give a little backstory, uh, to me, it's similar to the Emmett Till story in which a a white woman alleged that a black man assaulted her um, white men individuals went to the city of Rosewood Rosewood Florida um, killed anywhere between 6 and 25 black individuals um, burned the city down multiple black people left the town never returned so then we have the Thibodeau massacre now I'm not as um, versed in the Thibodeau massacre so it was interesting when I found this, right? So the typical massacre is when in which blacks were shot in the back along railroad tracks for demanding higher wages in 1887, right? So what had happened around that time was that uh, blacks were able to unionize and they realized that their labor was in high demand. So they started to demand higher wages for the work that they were doing. Now what ended up happening was you had individuals that saw this and felt that look we're not paying you that right so they were captured abducted taken to railroads and told to run as fast as they could while a firing squad shot them in the back 1887 right so then we have the Opelousa massacre right of 1868 right um, a group labeled the Knights of Camellia targeted blacks because they felt the Democratic stronghold was losing steam in the South. Now, when we look at it nowadays, we see that the South is red. Um, there was no how like look the way the roles have reversed. Right. The Democratic and Republican Party have switched. Democratic Party is deemed to be the good party now which in the past the Republican Party was deemed to be the good party. When I say good party, I'm speaking is in terms of benefits for black people. Now, whatever, whatever line you stand on with the Democrat Republican, that's you. I'm not here to talk about that. But just to give a little backstory for those who may have been living under a rock, right? So what they ended up doing was they estimated that on the night of September 8th, 1868, between two and three hundred blacks were murdered because of the fact that African Americans had earned the right to vote. Again, the least form of resistance, right? Because the aspect is that, you know, and I've had a bit of mine talk about this and I'm not trying to incite anything like this but you know because you, you this is you would think that this is the furthest thing from ever happening but with the current state of affairs and the current way that things are going nothing is out of question but the term is that African Americans can't win a race war right can't win a race war not enough guns not enough people committed to the cause right again the psychology of it, right? Um, the Haitian, the Haitian Revolution, they didn't feel that way. They were outnumbered by the French. Uh, for those who studied history, I was I was intrigued by uh, history when I heard the story about uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, just the way that the French were were operating. Now, obviously, uh, in school they didn't go as far as what happened in Haiti. It was just the fact that Napoleon Bonaparte was a short guy. 
Um, his name is still synonymous because when we talk about short people, we refer to them if they are a little bit overly aggressive. They have the Napoleon complex, which means that, hey, they feel like people are looking down on them and they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that you don't look down at them. Right. But when we talk about the Haitian Revolution, Haiti was outnumbered by the French, but Haiti defeated the French. Right. And by them defeating the French, Haiti became a independent nation. Right. Now, you look at Haiti now, and you look at the despair and all of that stuff like this, but again, I'm not here to talk about this. What I'm here to talk about from the aspect of is that, again, when you trick yourself into thinking something, then so shall it be, all right? So, hypothetically speaking, which like I said, I don't like doing hypotheticals, I can't see a situation in which if African Americans went to the Capitol building, African Americans would go to the Capitol building um, in this climate, right? Unarmed. So I can't see that African Americans would be shot down. I can't see it. All right? Now, if we look at it from the nonviolent, the, the ideology of, you know, when they go low, we go high. If you look at it from that aspect, a aspect then yeah, maybe they they probably would have been slaughtered. They wouldn't have made it to, um, they wouldn't have made it to the Capitol building. They would have been stopped en route to that, right? So if you're looking at it from that standpoint, but like I said, I don't like look. I don't want to look at it from that standpoint because I feel like it's a different mindset now. Um, out, even though there are. Um, certain factors that are still holding on to that old guard right but you know when we look at this in its purest essence and it's in its biggest essence um african americans haven't uh gone as far as white individuals in terms of demanding respect on enough occasions because of the inferiority complex that I feel that has been bestowed upon us by years of being trampled on. And it's not enough emphasis or it's not enough time taken to look at instances in which black people were like, you know what? Not today. Not today. But I don't really feel like that even even if again hypothetically speaking which again like I said I don't like doing hypotheticals but even if we even if we took it to that particular standpoint I don't think African Americans would ever just storm the Capitol building anyway right I don't just think we would just it get to that point to do that anyway right now I'm not the spokesperson or the speaker for that you know by any stretch of the imagination but I just don't feel like that that would be the place that, you know, we would necessarily go if it got to that particular point. Right. But obviously, um, after the death is settled, um, four individuals were, you know, murdered or died. I'm not going to say murdered. They died. Um, multiple, you know, a couple of arrests occurred. Some individuals that you know, took pictures, they were, you know, fired from their job, right? And me personally, I don't feel like any of these people are necessarily fired, fired. And when I, when I say fired, fired, I'm speaking in terms of um, reassignment, which is a lot of the things that we see when we see these, these police officers, when they get in trouble in one district or one, you know, police for, um, you know thing they end up getting reassigned right so that's the way I kind of look at it depending on where these people are on the totem pole if you're you're high up because I saw the uh, it was an image of a, a Texas real estate developer uh, they flew on a private jet from Texas to DC to go out there and you know take photos and stuff like that right but Again, getting back to the, the basis and to the point of what it is I'm trying to talk about, I don't necessarily look at this 
as being an instance or a tangible uh, reasoning to say, well, had they been black people, they wouldn't have did that. But black people, like African Americans, they we we haven't gotten to a point for us to even think about going to the the Capitol building to to invoke any of that particular stuff, right? It's just we were protest, um, we were riot in the street and things of that particular nature. But as far as actually going to the Capitol building and partaking in any of the activities that we saw uh, occur then, no. And obviously it's from that particular factor that you would, we would go there unarmed and yeah. And I gave three examples of what will happen if you, you know, you're doing something and you're unarmed? That's just that's just the way it is. A bully doesn't pick on anyone that they feel will fight back. That's 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 always been the the same. Bullies only pick on the weak. They only pick on people that they know that won't fight back until you push them in a corner. But ultimately, the corner for African Americans, we've never, it's, it's like the corner continues to go further and further and further and further and further and further back, right? Never gotten, never gotten our back to the corner to the point that, you know what, enough is enough, you know, enough is enough, but, you know, it's just my opinion on the matter. You know, I'm just, as they say, thinking out loud. But I just, when I when I heard that term or heard that phrase and it was stated so many different times, I just stopped and I thought to myself, I'm saying like, um, it would be ignorant to even put those two parallels together. Because if you go into the Capitol building unarmed, and you're African American, yeah, you're gonna get laid down. If you go to the Capitol building and you're armed, then we can't necessarily say what would happen because ultimately you give them you 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 have a you have a you have a fifty fifty chance versus going there as white people did. But again, like I said, we haven't gotten as a collective angry enough to to do something like that because you know kind of transitioning to a talking point in part two we still look at america as what it was labeled or deemed to be we don't look at it from the aspect of the cards that we've been dealt right but yeah, that's, I mean, that's just, that's, that's the way I look at it. Like I said, I mean, you know, the Mulford Act followed by the Gun Control Act of 1968, that was, that seemingly covertly got African Americans away from using guns and the misconception and misperception of what the Black Panther Party was, um, further puts it into a perspective because that was one of the things that was feared. White Americans fear black individuals, African Americans with guns. That's just what it is. But if only 19% have guns versus 41%, it's nothing really to fear. You know, when the um, situation hits the fan and you can pretty much predict what's going to happen, then ultimately, yeah, you know, that's that's how you're going to show up. It will, I would be hard pressed to feel that if any of these protests and there were multiple people there with, with weapons of African-American descent, I think things would have been... I think things would have looked a little bit differently. All right, it looked a little, it would have looked a little bit differently. So there's that. But that's just my that's just my 
thought process on the uh, situation. And, you know, if you feel different, I mean, you can comment, you know. I mean, it's that's just me thinking because, like I said, it's just such a a, a far-fetched hypothetical thing to to come out and say when when we really break it down and sit down and 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 study and decipher this it's like african americans aren't that aren't that angry even though us along with native americans have just as much if not more well no 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 just as, not just as much have even more reason to storm a capitol building than a few individuals that felt that the election process didn't um, go go their way. It's a lot of things that haven't gone our way, and we've just taken it in stride. So, and I, to me, I honestly I look at it kind of like I kind of look at it as a backhanded compliment, really. Because when you say that had that been African Americans, they would have been shot down. I look at it from a standpoint that's like you're you're saying that we don't have the ability to be to sh from a organizational standpoint, if need be, go there and be successful so i look at it as a backhanded compliment to me and i'm i get a, i'm a little offended by it honestly because it's like you're you're stating that only a certain group of people if they feel that they've been wronged can can go there and and nothing will happen right and again covertly this mindset has been transmitted from generation to generation to generation to generation to the point that you can say that man y'all be sitting ducks y'all go up there man you already know what it'll be but you are only speaking about it from one particular standpoint just the same way as um the brothers in dallas who shot police officers they were vilified right and then the brother who name escapes me right now the brother who was so fed up with racism that he went on the staten island train and he shot any white person that he saw and obviously he was arrested tried he's in jail for the rest of his life but that is only a manifestation or that's 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 only select situations in which black people felt that I don't feel like doing it the way that y'all want me to do it so if I'm gonna go out I'm gonna go out and be a martyr right so don't act as if there aren't those type of black people out there it just hasn't gotten to the point to where i feel like that they feel that you know what i'm gonna go out right i'm gonna go out so um there's that man you know but you might not look at it as a backhanded um I'm not you know when I'm using the wrong term, it's not a backhanded compliment. It's a slap in the face. That's what it is. It's it's, it's a slap in the face because the 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 people that are supposed to be the peaceful people. It's like a pig or a cow going to slaughter. You load it up on the trailer. They don't they don't they don't know. They may know, but they probably don't. They get on the trailer, they unload the trailer, they go to the slaughterhouse. That's that. They don't they don't possess the ability to to 
um, fight back. And then if they do fight back, it's only in a small individual group. Because I'd be, I'd be interested, honestly, to do a poll on what's the perception of what do people perceive um, or think about the Black Panther Party. I'd be interested to see what individuals think about it. Do they feel like it was a detriment? Do they feel like it was a stain in black culture? Um, what does it, you know, how do they, what is their legacy remembered by? Because we have to realize that unless you sit and you study them yourself, the information that you're given about them is wrong. I mean, they were compared to the, to the clan for crying out loud. Right? And while that was wrong and ignorant, we have to look at it from a standpoint of what did the clan do? Clan didn't like somebody. They didn't like a particular group. They went out. They did the, the diabolical things that they did. And they they evoked they invoked fear. Right? The Black Panthers invoked fear in the respective group or unrespective group that they were trying to show that, you know what? I'm not gonna be bullied anymore. So in that regard, they were similar, but they were the polar opposites. As far as the ideological standpoint, they were the total opposites. But when we talk about it from striking fear to the point that laws had to come across the table, it shows the power that you had. All right. But that's the end of this um, broadcast. Um, stay tuned for uh, next week when I attack it from a little bit more in-depth perspective about um, is it really to Americas? And if it really is to Americas, is that bad?